Uh, Mike Lynch from uh, uh, Milford, Michigan, and uh, here at Overland Expo, 10th anniversary, 2019. Um, a couple rigs, uh, 2017 uh, International Global Expedition Vehicles, and uh, 2017 Chevy Colorado uh, Duramax Diesel, kind of a plan, plan B and plan C vehicles, and uh, just having a good time here at the show. The uh, platform is the uh, the chassis platform. Mm -hmm. Chassis platform is the Workstar 7300 4x4. So it uh, it comes from the factory as a, a, a 4x4 chassis. I had just gotten in trouble in my my previous RV. It was a uh, uh, big class uh, C Super C, a similar truck, two wheel drive, and um, just dragging the back back end of, you know over things that typically a, a truck should be able to go over. So. Just getting it stuck twice, knowing I was in the wrong type of vehicle. So the, the kind of living quarters to where you're uh, eating, cleaning, sleeping, dining, um, is all kind of within a uh, arm's length, and it's I think is an advantage um, because it's it it's kind of the core center area of the truck. I've got everything I need standing right here. I could sit, but I just a lot of times prefer to lean and just look out uh, the hole that I have in the side of my truck. The mattress is wonderful. It's a, just a Lisa uh, foam mattress that keeps me asleep when I when I when I go to bed. Some nice uh, leather dinette quilted cushions that I uh, put together that I, that I really like, and they're they're very comfortable. Memory foam on the cushions here. A good friend of mine owns a mill in Michigan and they helped put this together for me with some walnut and some maple and um, some zebra wood that uh, each of them have their own separate stories with this particular family and uh, it's just kind of a nice touch so it's one of the adjustments that I made and if I were to make any big adjustments to this I, I would uh, lessen some of the storage that I have I would put a bed uh, on a lifting platform so the bed would go to the ceiling and I would put a U-shaped um, dinette in the back. So I would be able to sleep tiered um, on full-size beds if I did it all again. And the only way that you figure that out is by building and going through this and figuring out what's good for you. Um, a lot of the trucks that Global Expedition builds are these configurations because it works very well. Um, it really depends on how many you're trying to sleep and how big of a box or so many variables because it's the truck starts 100 percent custom and it starts from the ground up of what you want it to be it's you want a window here a window there if you want a window on a floor we'll put a window on a floor so it, it's it's 100 percent custom you design it all yourself and in doing that you sometimes say well if i did it all over again i'd change it or tweak it something um, but there are so many things I would keep. This this window here was an option from from um, Global Expedition, and um, it's one of the one of the things I knew right off the bat that I wanted because knowing I didn't want to have a huge living box, um, I wanted to have kind of the outside feeling um, when I'm inside, and vice versa. So it really makes you feel like you're outside, elevated enough to where if you're anywhere to where you needed to be concerned, nothing could get in. Um, and then it's a window within a window, so I can close that. There's, you know, screens that I can lower down um, to keep bugs out. And if that's too much of a an opening, I can close that. And then there's a window within that. So it it really makes you feel like you're on the outside. The cabinets that kind of uh, surround the living box and quarters, I've kind of designed for uh, where I'm at in the truck. So back here is a lot of my uh, pants that I fold. Uh, a lot, the one in the rear is just kind of uh, computer equipment, some things that I don't need on a regular basis. Uh, a couple tops, uh, tops here are um, food related, and then the one above the door is anything bathroom related. It's towels, something I can reach from the bathroom and grab. Um, down below here, uh, this is a uh, kind of uh, an overbuilt, organized, organized uh, titanium plates, uh, titanium silverware, titaniumware, a Trek pack system to organize everything. I've done that with all of my uh, cooking utensils, so everything is locked in the place as I'm driving. Um, there's nothing that kind of drives me more mad than 
and rattles that you can't get to um, or you can't find because it's too far away. So that really kind of eliminates any rattles I have in, in areas to where a lot of things tend to rattle, pots and pans and, and uh, cups and silverware. I've got a uh, water for, uh, purification system here. Uh, the main truck has a three-part, uh, three-filter system uh, carbon and then um, a couple other just uh, filters different size microns and then this will um, turn it uh, UV as well so it puts UV light on I can pretty much put any water in here and use that for anything I brush brushing teeth or um, a small glass of water 130 gallons of water fresh water um, and I have a system that I can take to uh, a pool chlorine or not a stream and I can uh, take from a source, uh, it goes through another three filters so that by the time it would come out of here, it would have gone through seven filters. So um, this, that system actually will take the chlorine out of the water. It's a separate water pump, a 50 foot hose, and I just need a, uh, a clean enough source that it's not going to jam filters. So if you can see through it, I, I've, I can use it. So this is the, uh, the loo, it's a wet bath, and uh, for me it's, it's great because as I clean myself, I clean my shower, um, all teak and uh, same countertops um, as the kitchen area. It has a cassette uh, set for toilet, um, kind of a brief briefcase style toilet. You don't have to depend on a black water tank, you've got a kind of a black water briefcase so you can take it to rest stops regular regular household toilets I love this setup um, I built this one a little bit bigger than they typically do for this size truck knowing that my wife was going to be uh, with me a lot so you I can turn um, I've got the room to turn around there's enough room in here to to be able to go to the restroom or to take a shower it's not, I'm not having to fight my way around the toilet to take a shower you just have to put some thought into how much time do I spend in a bathroom and uh, how big do I want it. So I think gender plays a huge role there. Um, but knowing that I was going to be in this truck more than my wife and I, I built this more for, for my needs with her in mind. Um, she did a lot of the, the color choices and all of that and I wanted to keep her on board with this. But being realistic, I, do, I, I travel a lot solo. So this is... This here is commonly known as or referred to um, a lot of times as a pass-through. Um, pass-through door or sometimes if there's no door it's just a pass-through window. And this goes into the kind of the, the cockpit of the, uh, of the truck. And um, it's got, it's got some, some nice living space as well. Right now I've got two of the, uh, the air seats facing in to kind of turn it into a lounge. Um, and I've got that outfitted with uh, an array of different uh, iPads and CarPlay to uh, attach to my phone, so it's completely hands-free. Siri is my friend when I'm driving um, because it, it makes for driving a vehicle this size safe and uh, your eyes on the road. And for a lot of people that don't observe that in their everyday driving, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer and a no-choice in a truck this size unless you're looking to hurt somebody. Driving this, this truck is, uh, or this RV, it's intimidating by the way what you see. Um, it's, it's when you get in and you start driving it, it's very easy to drive. It's got an automatic Allison transmission, so you're not shifting gears. But there, there, there are very large tires on it, and with large tires comes a bit of a roll. There's a lot of movement in these tires. So you mix the roll in the tire, depending on what your air pressure is, to the actual roll in the chassis. The biggest thing you got to tell yourself is it's not how fast I'm able to go, it's how fast I'm able to stop. And um, that's one of the first questions that we're asked a lot of times with these trucks is, well, how fast can I drive it? Drive it, and well, sure, you can drive it 80 miles an hour, but how fast can you stop it? And that's, that's the biggest problem. So on the expressway, I'm driving 70 miles an hour. Um, have I driven at 80 trying to to look ahead to that next hill and keep some momentum, yes, but it's it's uh, both hands on the steering wheel, um, kind of white knuckling it because this type of vehicle is not designed to be driven um, at those speeds. That said, when you're driving in Colorado and it's a difference of climbing the hill at 30 miles an hour or planning the way you drive 
and to use momentum to your advantage, um, I think law enforcement, um, like with many type of truck drivers, look at that as, as good driving. So we've got uh, 445, um, 65 tires, 22 and a half inch rims, um, 44 inches tall. Uh, got a uh, stationary uh, tire inflation system, um, so while the truck is uh, stationary, uh, it allows me to air up and down uh, the, the tires uh, eight times the rate as I would be able to, to manually. So it's hooked into uh, a valve, it's a system designed by TI Systems out of Germany, and uh, it's a great system. Each tire has uh, this hose system that has a quick neck fitting, and this just goes to each tire, and I can inflate, deflate uh, off of the little valve system that's in this box here. So it is a 2017. That said, you're stuck with uh, some of the uh, emissions, so it, it, it does have uh, uh, def uh, for uh, purposes of emissions and and uh, politics, really. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a new truck, new emissions. This is a 100 gallon tank here, 100 gallon tank here, and an 80 gallon tank on the other side. So 280 gallons, uh, 2200 mile range. So Detroit to West Coast. Uh, yeah, Kansas, eight miles to the gallon. Uh, Colorado, seven. So there's, and that's regardless of pulling a vehicle or how much weight I have. It, uh, the, it's a 33,000 pound chassis, derated to 20, uh, 26,000. Um, and I feel a lot of times more weight the better in terms of just the stability of the truck, depending on where the weight's at. So this uh, uh, is a uh, 2017 Chevy um, Colorado ZR2 with a Duramax 2.8. And um, I've designed it for kind of many different reasons. One being kind of a, a vehicle that I can dump places. Um, my ideas are not to tow it. It gives a good plan, plan C. So it, it works well in being able to, to have headquarters and then be able to go a little bit further. Um, I only tow it on pavement. Being flat towed, you can't back up. So it's, it, it's very limiting. It also acts as kind of a guest house or in-law quarters with a Vagabond Outdoors uh, habitat. It's a great setup, so you can sleep two people in that. This is the, um, the entire inflation system. So uh, this valve system here, allows me to uh, adjust the PSI or bars uh, to the uh, setting that I want. Running highway, I'm just over 100 pounds per tire. Off-road, I'm between 40 and 60, depending on conditions. Chassis batteries, AGM batteries, um, cassette for the, for the crapper inside. It just pops out, and you can take it to rest stop, toilet. Um, you don't need a dump station. It doesn't limit you to having to go to any uh, facility to dump your waste. That is really the only black water in the, it is. It is the only black water source in the entire truck. Everything else outside of that is gray water. Uh, any soaps I use are biodegradable. I dump my gray water uh, where I should dump it, but uh, technically I could dump it anywhere because it's uh, everything I use, uh, wouldn't any, nothing would hurt the environment. So this is a, a, a rigged supply uh, tire carrier attached via a two inch receiver. This is the uh, interior here, goose gear, goose gear interiors with some nice slide outs, ARB fridge, and a six and a half foot bed, a double bed. So you can put a, a child, five footer, you know, it's a five foot bed, and then double bed up top. So on the, on the back of the truck here, we've got some uh, Max Tracks, uh, sand ladders, recovery. They're great. Anything, um, getting any type of wheel spin, mud, sand, put those underneath the tires, and uh, it gives you traction. So it, uh, it, it works out very, very well to where if you didn't have those, you may need a winch. Uh, I've used those to where I haven't even used the winches yet. It, it really simplifies the process. They bend, they bend right back to where they're at. They're flexible, they, they do the job, so. Um, boxes here, storage up top, a lot of recovery gear. About down below here, I've got a 12 volt uh, power washer. 
So usually at the end of the trips, I use whatever water I have left in the truck to wash the truck. So I'm not just uh, dumping the water and then going to a quarter car wash to spray off the truck. I'm getting some use to whatever water I have remaining. Back here, it's a great setup here. One of my favorite pieces of gear here, McLean Metal Works here. It's, uh, it's a, a hammock rack and it uh, just folds out and turns, in, turns into a hammock on both sides. It's a good place to be able to take a break and relax. The uh, tow hitch is extended and uh, that just gives me different levels to be able to, to have the pitch of the, the tow bar. One up bike carrier. Uh, it's a solid set setup here. It's, it uh, keeps the bike in place. Yeah, but it's great because you just unscrew this bad boy here and and then the bike just tilts down and then you can just toss it up there. Either way, if you had a couple bikes or if that was going to be too much weight for you, the spare tire is on a winch and I can drop the whole setup then. A couple other uh, storage boxes here, tools, that's just kind of an empty box I keep for any guests that are coming, they can put their, their stuff in there. And then this is just all on this whole slide, so I can access the gear from on either side. This slides out. The biggest problem is you tend to bring too much gear. Everything from this, this here, I've got everything labeled. Um, this is anything outdoor, utensils, plates. Um, this one would be my stoves, outdoor kitchen. Um, I try to keep everything kind of separate. My burners, Scottle Grill here. Um, the couple boxes over there is kind of uh, uh, outdoor toys for the kids, frisbees and uh, extra hammocks, um, tie downs to tie everything down. It just makes it really easy to get to very quickly. This box here, I've got a, a 4,000 watt generator. I don't use it because I've got uh, too much solar. So. Solar is probably my, my, my favorite piece of equipment on this vehicle um, add-on. Here I've got a great little system. It's a, a Snow Peak three-tier storage system, uh, cot or sofa. So uh, it's kind of a multi-purpose uh, piece of gear there. It has storage on this here, so I stack those boxes on it. So as soon as it goes on the tray, it acts as a storage system. Um, out here it acts as Today it's turned into a cot. Central and tire inflation for the passenger side rear tire. This is just really a combination of all my quick things that I go to, um, tools. I tend to use soft bags rather than tool boxes just because they kind of self-form. Put more stuff in there. Yeah, two of them. I think they're the, probably the best in the market. The Adventure Tool Company, they do all of our tarps. Um, and Blue Ridge Overland gear. Uh, I love aluminum boxes, a Lou box. They're, they're light. Every time they get a new dent, that adds a little bit of character to them, and they'll last a lifetime. So it's it's. Uh, I like to buy gear once. I don't like to do it twice. And I try I try to represent here with all the good companies that I have come across or people that are uh, trying to promote themselves. I, I don't want to tack on a bunch of stickers on the outside of the truck, but it's my way of kind of, these are my souvenirs. So th this is just uh, uh, they call it a, the Natura uh, opening wall window, and it. It really makes you feel like you're inside it when you're outside, and when you're inside, it feels like you're outside. So it, it kind of really brings the elements uh, in or out, depending depending on where you're at, whether you're in or out of sight of the truck. So we've got a 12-volt a Vinterfrigo um, fridge and freezer. Works out great. Uh, draws five amps of power, and uh, for this for this size truck and for uh, three or four people, it's 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 perfect. It's it's a uh, it's really great fridge. This company, along with a few others, make uh, single fr uh, fridge slide outs or something like that. So if the uh, freezer space was enough, you could add a, just a single slide uh, refrigerator. Induction, uh, true induction um, cooktop here. It uh, it works great. It's uh, electric. Uh, typically, you have the induction option or diesel option and. I opted out of uh, kind of more simplicity. Um, diesel with cooktops are sometimes a little bit more finicky than some of the other diesel products. No propane on this vehicle. It's either electric, solar, or diesel. Got heated floors, um, so that helps a lot with the uh, morning temps to where you're not having to run uh, the Webasto Thermal 90. You just heat up the floor, keeps the unit nice and nice and warm. Hydronic uh, throughout the entire system, so you've got the Webasto doing um, your forced air heat hydronically and then as well as your hot water. So 
This thing has got uh, endless hot water, and it's hot. I mean, you can get this nearly boiling. You could get it boiling if you want. I've had to turn it down and so down. So it's so hot. I would have gone hydronic here uh, in comparison to electric for sure, especially because this is tile, and it takes so much energy to get that tile hot. To where hydronic, you just let it run. You're only going to run the electric heat when you want it because it draws so much power. So. One thing with living in this truck for uh, periods of time, it, it really puts you in a, a kind of a conserving mode. And some may say that's ridiculous for a truck that gets seven or eight miles to the gallon, but uh, once it's parked, it's very efficient. I mean, it's, it's using solar, uh, 1.2 kilowatts of solar. I can run my 12 volt air, 12 volt air conditioner and be, uh, have net power. So it's, it's endless. So uh, right now it's a, it's a bright sunny day in uh, Flagstaff and um, my battery top is at 85%. Three hours ago I woke up and it was at 68. So in the course of a couple hours I've renewed my battery bank by almost 25%. And um, I'm bringing in 59.8 amps of solar right now. So my fridge runs off five, my air conditioning at full blast is running on 40. So it, it's under bunk, it's uh, cruising comfort, it is a solid system built for the marine world. Um, and we're slowly trying to get Chris from, uh, from cruising comfort to, to step into the kind of RV ex expedition exploring overlanding market because it's, there's a true use for it. 12 volt is the way to go anytime you can. The microwave is the only thing I have I believe, outside of anything I bring into the truck, that requires you to invert the power. So um, it's a household microwave, and I don't use it very often. Um, one, I don't like to microwave too much stuff. I wanted a steam oven, but I, I couldn't. I, the one I wanted wasn't available here in the States anymore, but it's nice to have. I've used it a handful of times, but most of my cooking's done outside. It's a Mastervolt 4000 watt inverter. Um, it's as, as much as I need for this size truck. So my wife can, can run any uh, hair dryer that she throws at it. Um, a lot of times you, you think I don't need the 4000 watts of power until you say, well, you need a toaster or you need a hair dryer. Those are the two things, and if you look at the back of most hair dryers, you'd be surprised at how much power they take. Hers is just under 4,000 watts. I mean, it's a small household heater. The uh, solar is um, 1.2 uh, kilowatts um, going into a lithium battery bank. I've got two master volt 320 amp batteries, so I've got 720 amp hours of power. And the nice thing about lithium opposed to an AGM um, battery is, is you can bring those levels down much further without damaging the battery. With an AGM battery you don't want to get down much below 60 60 percent to where you can exhaust a lithium battery down to 40 or 50 without doing any real damage depending on how you're charge, recharging it. Up above here we've got a couple skylights. They're one of my favorite uh, kind of structural things in here because they let so much light in and they're glass. Um, they're tempered uh, they're very, you can stand on them and you don't know what a, a glass skylight is until you go from a glass or from an acrylic or a plastic skylight to a glass. You see the sky so it's different than side windows so it's the, one of the features in this truck I really love. I can see the scar, the styes from this one I had it facing that because my head sleeps down there and I can see the stars. It works really well. All the windows in here are all glass. You can throw a brick at these windows and they will not break. Unfortunately, there was a time to where one of these trucks had tipped over because of driver miscalculation and the windows didn't break. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. So KCT windows, uh, German, once again, Germans really know how to build uh, anything with four wheels, two wheels. Uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, check this video out. If you want to follow me, it's Adventure Tinker uh, on Instagram, A-D-V-T-I-N-K-E-R. I um, also have a YouTube channel, um, same address. Um, if you're interested in one of these vehicles, you're welcome to contact Global Expedition Vehicles out of uh, Springfield, Missouri. 100% um, custom, they do a nice job and um, build great trucks. Mm -hmm.